St. Nicholas Day. And I often wonder, what would St. Nicholas do if he saw the way we handle Christmas today? And we, we have some indications. We have some indications as to how St. Nicholas would respond. And so in thinking about St. Nicholas today as we celebrate his name day, so many members of our church celebrate today. And um, St. Nicholas was such a powerful example and figure in the formative years of Christianity when we really came to understand what the Bible says. What is the Trinity? What is Jesus? What are his natures? St. Nicholas, one of the champions of orthodoxy. And um, there are three things I'd like to highlight about St. Nicholas's character. And I think that if we can take these three characteristics of St. Nicholas's and apply them to our journey through the Nativity Fast, then we can have a Christmas that's going to be more pleasing to God and more fulfilling for us. It's funny, I was actually having this conversation with my daughter last night, how when we do what's pleasing to God, it's fulfilling for us. When we're true to who God wants us to be, we're happier people. Anyway, so number one, Saint Nicholas, we know the story, right? There were three girls in his neighborhood, three girls he was aware of. You have to remember that back then, if, if you were a woman or a girl, you were somebody's property, period. That's just how the world was constructed. You were either the property of your father or your husband, or you could be sold into slavery. Those were kind of like the options for legal existence in the Roman Empire at the time, right? And there were three girls and their father loved him so much and things were hard on the family and for whatever reason, this man was broke. And he was contemplating, he was facing the reality that he could not provide for his daughters. And not only could he not provide for his daughters in order to have them be married, he would have to provide a dowry for a suitable marriage. And he was faced with no option but to sell his daughters into slavery. So, St. Nicholas came from a wealthy shipping family, right? And St. Nicholas says to himself, we got to save these girls. But I don't want anyone to know that I'm saving the girls. I want the glory to go to God. I'm going to break into their house at night. I'm going to put gold in their shoes. Enough gold that each girl will be able to have a suitable husband. will keep the girls out of slavery. And so he secretly snuck in, placed gold into their shoes and snuck out when they woke up. And that's why we put gifts in Christmas stockings, of course. But look at the characteristic of St. Nicholas. He had a profound generosity. He had a deep empathy. He looked to his sisters and his brothers as they were his own. And he took care of them. Generosity, by the way, is not like spoiling your kids. That's something different. Generosity is being compelled to do good for those who are struggling. Generosity is to feel a responsibility for the person across the street, across the room. Generosity is to know and to take to heart the words of the Lord, freely you have received, freely you should give. 
It's like when somebody comes to work in your yard and you don't know them from a hole in the wall and they're just working for somebody that you're paying and you say, it's hot outside, I'm going to give that person a glass of water. That's generosity, philoxenia, right? Philoxenia is hospitality, but it all comes from the same place in the heart, the place of recognizing the image and likeness of the, in the other person. St. Nicholas had that. That's why he was compelled to secretly help those girls. It's a different thing if I help you and I got a t-shirt that says I helped the girls and everybody's congratulating me on what a great guy I am. That's not generosity. I mean, it might be. Most of us are kind of a mixed bag, but that, my good work there, feeds my ego. But when I do my good work and my left hand doesn't know what my right is doing, when I offer my service in secret to God, and my Father who sees me in secret rewards me. That's what Jesus talks about in the book of Matthew. So St. Nicholas had that. He had that impulse to be generous, that impulse to be philanthropic, that impulse to do good, number one. Number two, St. Nicholas came from a big family, shipping family, if I understand things correctly. His parents were wealthy merchants, so the hagiographers tell us. For St. Nicholas, the sky was the limit. He could have done anything. He could have partied his whole life. He could have taken over his parents' business and built their empire up even bigger. St. Nicholas had all the resources, all the connections, all the relationships. His family had all the wealth. And when his parents died, he was their sole heir. And what did St. Nicholas decide to do? If we go back to last Sunday's gospel, there's one thing you lack. Sell all that you have and distribute it to the poor. And that's what he did. He really did. He liquidated his parents' estate and he gave the proceeds to the poor. Kept enough to subsist on. Joined a monastery. Eventually became a bishop. That's St. Nicholas. So not only did he have that impulse to help and that inclination towards generosity and philanthropy, but he was not a greedy person. He wasn't a materialistic person. He realized that there were bigger things in life than what he could amass materially. He realized there were bigger things in life than the respect he could command because of his material wealth and worldly power. And so he relinquished his worldly wealth, his worldly power, so that he could focus on the kingdom of God. So he was an extraordinary person in that way in that he lived a life of poverty for Christ. Unbelievable. And number three, he was a defender of the truth. Saint Nicholas was a defender of the truth. At the first ecumenical council, there was a huge debate about whether Jesus could be fully human and fully man. How could God die on the cross? If he dies, he's not God. And there were those out there who were trying to change the teaching of the church that Jesus is not fully human. That Jesus didn't fully embrace our nature. That Jesus did not truly close the gap between humanity and God. That Jesus wasn't the lifeguard who jumped into the turbulent waters to save the drowning victim. But the church said, yes, he was, yes, he was, yes, he was. And not only... St. Nicholas was so enraged, he was so enraged at the heresy of Arius that he punched him in his face. He really did. You can read about it. And they were going to defrock him. They were going to defrock him because it's against the canons for a bishop to, to strike another human being. But then all of the other bishops at the council, they all had the same dream. God revealed to them that St. Nicholas... His passion was for the truth of Christ that it be preserved. 
and that he didn't act out of malice, so they had to forgive him and reinstate him, even though he had technically broken the rules. Now, I'm not recommending that we all go out and beat up people who don't believe in Jesus. But I am saying this. The truth of who Jesus was mattered to St. Nicholas. He not only believed there was a truth about Jesus, he believed that we could discern it. And he believed it was important for our spiritual lives, for our eternal destiny, for our salvation. He didn't think that it just, you know, it doesn't really matter what you believe, you know, you just, you know, just show up. No, no, no. He said it does matter who Jesus is. It does matter that he's fully human, that he's fully God, that his two natures are united in one person and that both natures are uncompromised. It does matter that God became man for our salvation and that he fully embraced our humanity. And so, as we come up on Christmas and we want to make sure we're on the right side of St. Nicholas, right? I think that we can hold up these three characteristics and aspire towards them. Let us be generous. Let us be philanthropic. Let us be heroes for those who are down on their luck, for those who we can help. Let kindness be our motivator. Let's challenge materialism. Let's realize that there's more to life than how much I can amass, how much influence I have. Let's challenge materialism and let's focus our hearts on the kingdom of God. And let us seek to know God. He has revealed himself to us in certain ways. It's more than a warm, fuzzy feeling when you light a candle and say a prayer. It's about drawing near unto God. He drew near to us in his incarnation. That's what we're getting ready to celebrate on the 25th of December. Let us draw near to him in prayer and in study as we try to understand and know him more fully. Thank you for your attention. May God continue to bless and keep each and every one.